chica que dice. Comment ça va? Uh, ça va bien. How are you? I'm good, thank you. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. For Motomami. Mm. Um, this album is, to me, the first album that you've done with a point of view. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it was important to have a way to express yourself. Yeah. And this is the first time you say so many things uh, with. Uh, so many words, it's like uh, pa, 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 you know, yeah. it's boxing with the words. <laughs> yeah. And I would like to know how did you decide to be able to do, okay, I have a big audience, yeah. I'm very huge in the world, some Latin girls think I'm the leader of a new generation, but I'm going to do one step higher and to take the risk to talk about taboo subjects. Um, you know, I feel like while I was working on other projects, like my previous albums, Los Angeles and Malquerer, it's true that there was a point of view, a personal point of view, but in the musical decisions. But the content of it definitely was not like that, no? Like Motomami. Motomami is the first time that I think that I really talked about actual shit that happens in my day to day yeah. or my personal point of view, my reflections about certain stuff. And I think that it's, it makes sense though, because now, I'm a woman, I know who I am. I know how I think about certain stuff. I had time enough to know how I feel about certain stuff. So why not share it if now I feel comfortable enough to do it? And Before I felt more comfortable being a channel yeah. to this tradition, to flamenco songs, etc or inspired in that. But I think that now it was different. I, I was like, there's too much going on in my life to not talk about it and reflect about it. And it comes from a girl who comes from Spain uh, called Rosalia, uh, and who is saying more stuff than the big US rapper today. And the rap is not saying a lot of stuff in terms of message or politics. And I was talking to this with Burna Boy. And he was explaining to me uh, why the culture now is putting the emphasis on people who have nothing to say. And you have stuff to say, and it's, it's incredible that nowadays it's a woman, a girl, who are saying the most messages. I mean, wow, thank you. Uh, I feel like, though, I feel there's a lot of artists that I um, admire, that I feel that they they share a point of view and they say mohan. That's how we say it in, back home, we say te mojaste, te mojas o no te mojas, when you really commit into, into something and you uh, take the risk, kind of. And I feel like the same way though, the same way that other women have inspired me, because Chabela Vargas has, has inspired me, Celia, um, Janis Joplin, Patti Smith, Bjork, all these women, they inspired me, so, I think that now I can make music because other art artists have done music before and they set the path. Missy Elliott inspired me, Lil Kim inspired me. There are lyrics in this album that wouldn't exist if I haven't heard a woman talk how all these women talk. Well, how did Lil Kim inspire you? Well, I think that she was a pioneer in the way she would present herself. Definitely, in her lyrics, in her style, just her, just just su, su persona. I love Lil Kim. <laughs> She's What's amazing. your favorite song of Lil Kim? 
Ay, Dios mío, todas, todas. All her albums Would you are like amazing. Would you like to that? Why not? But all yeah. of them. Yeah. Like, I think that she's just an icon. Yeah. Yeah, Every, yeah. Everything she has done, I really like all her stuff. She's still an icon. She's a legend. Yeah, uh, all of us, we are all inspired yeah. in her. Yeah. I don't think that uh, any artist of my generation don't know about Lil' Kim. Yeah, definitely. Now put your lighters up. Let's die. Put your lighters up. New York, put your lighters up. DC, keep putting your lighters up. Philadelphia, put your lighters up. Detroit, put your lighters up. Shy down, keep putting them lighters up. No matter where you're from, put your lighters up. And there's a lot of inspiration in rap in this, in this project, the same way that there's a lot of inspiration of, of flamenco still, and then Latino America and, and the music from Latino America, bachata, dembow, yeah. eh, reggaeton, eh, boleros, Hector Lavoe, all of that. And I feel like I chose these styles because I wanted to honor them. I wanted to, to share my, my love and admiration to these styles that I feel like that about these styles, the same way that I feel about rap, about yeah. um, industrial music, etc. And this is a, a street music, you know? When I was um, uh, younger, yeah. uh, once upon a time I've been young, <laughs> uh, I was a, a journalist in a hip hop magazine, yeah. and we went to New York, it was the 50 cent era. Yeah. And I thought that all the people were going to listen hip hop in the cars, mm -hmm. and they were listening to Aventura, yeah. the, the bachata. Yeah. And I saw you on stage with them. Yeah. And I was asking them, like, you're not Latino, why are you listening to this? And they were, they were telling me that it was the music of the street. Mm -hmm. That makes sense, definitely. And I think that also in the streets you can find people from a lot of different places. So the, the music that is going to be heard there, or is going to be played there, is music from a lot of places too. And I, I enjoy a lot all musics, in, no matter what style they are. I don't think in music in a compartmented way. Mm. And I feel like sometimes it's classist when uh, there's people that say, oh, uh, Example, silly example. That doesn't make any sense. Jazz can be better than reggaeton or things like that. That's just a classist comment because every style, every music is a, un, una respuesta de un contexto of a different context. Mm. So if you understand that, you can uh, understand that it doesn't make any sense to have any prejudice in music. There's no music better than others. You have a lot of humility when you talk about others' music. Is it the key when you're an artist to have humility when you're listening to others? I mean, I think that that's something that I've learned while I was studying and while I was preparing as a musician. Um, my master, he would tell me all the time, eh, you did this wrong. Or, or not just my master in flamenco, but also he would say when it's right too, but he would say when it's wrong. He, and and uh, my teacher of uh, piano, he would say that too. He would say, you didn't do this chord progression right. Or the way you, la disposición, it was not right. So you had to figure out a way to fix it. So at the end of the day, to be a musician requires humbleness, humildad. Humilité. Humilité. It requires humilité. And it's something that uh, for me, I. I'm really happy that I learned that value while I was growing as a musician. And when you were learning music, you loved to improvise. Yeah. Um, what is the power of improvisation in the music? Oh my God, that's such a, a great question. I think that uh, other musicians would have responded much better than me. Um, but definitely when I see, for example, jazz musicians, when I see, um, some Coltrane, I hear some Coltrane uh, albums. I feel like the key of that, the improvisation, is, is the freedom yet that you get through improvising. I think that improvisation is like when you're driving a, a, a bike, for example. You're going fast, no? 
and you're in the present. If you look back, you're gonna te vas a caer, te vas a estrellar. If you keep in the present, you keep focused, then you're gonna be, you're gonna be fine, and you're gonna enjoy the ride, right? So it's the same when, when you're improvising. You just have to anchor yourself and commit to the idea that, or the feeling that you're having in that moment, and just keep going, keep going, keep going. And I find that the, there's something really powerful in improvisation. If you really feel free, if you let yourself go, then that just, that just gives you the, the, the freedom in that moment, and you really enjoy that moment. When was the last time you improvised in your life? Um, I think that, uh, Two hours ago, when I decided that I was going to go to a place I haven't been uh, yet, uh, and I, I told my girls, let's go to that place. Do you guys want to join me? Yeah, let's go, okay, let's go. <laughs> I try yeah. to improvise every day. I try to do always things that uh, I feel like doing, and, and boom, that's it. Do you still have time to have a life with all that you're living, all, all the travels that you make? Right. <laughs> I find a way. I find a way, I always try to find a way, I always figure out a way. <laughs> Give me an advice. An advice? Yeah. Hmm. Which, which type of advice are you looking for? How to manage to have uh, uh, real moments of life when you have a lot of work. Why do you And you're you working have... <laughs> a lot more than me. I don't know about that, because maybe you are a very hard worker. I'm a very hard worker, but probably you are too. Um, okay, so why are you working so much? Because I love what I'm doing. Then you're doing what you want to do, yeah. then, no? Yeah. Okay, so at the end of the day, I think that it's very important that you realize that you own your time and that you realize that you, you own your decisions. And as long as what you're doing is exactly what you feel like you want to do, probably everything is how it's supposed to be. When did you realize that it was going to be your life? Wow, that's a good question. Because you had no plan B. No, definitely no. Uh, I guess when I, w when I started feeling that I was conscious about, okay, my name is Rosalia. I'm from San Esteban Sarrubiras. Um, I want to make music, I guess. Yeah. I think early. Hmm. Because there is a lot of layers of understanding of your music and your image and even the cover. The thing that's interesting me in the cover mm -hmm. yeah. is the helmet. Definitely. And I love that you say that. Yeah, because there's a, everything in this project in Motomami is intentional. Deliberado, o sea, es como todo es, everything is measured on the detail. And, and the way the songs are produced, in the way the arrangements are, in the way I did certain melodies and I did certain lyrics, everything, everything. And in the visual, I care about it because it's how I translate these songs that I've worked on them for so long. How can I translate them into, a, into visual values, no? And I feel like, under my point of view, if I, if I had put uh, a fabric encima de mi cuerpo for that cover, how I'm wearing right now, you wouldn't uh, pay so much attention to the helmet. Mm. The helmet wouldn't feel as radical. So for me, it was about how can I find this contrast? Because contrast has been present on the whole project. So how can I find this contrast between the moto energy and the motor side and the mummy one, which is, one is more connected to the vehicle, el artificio, eh, el material, algo que es una construcción humana. Mm. When the other side, the motor, motor is that side and the mummy, it's more about the nature and about just being connected with the roots, with nature, with... Uh, with your parents too. Mi madre también, yeah, the, the, la figura de la madre, mm. women as... as uh, yeah, como las mujeres como fuerza creadora, definitely. My mom, my sister, my grandma, they are inspirations for me. I wouldn't do what I do without them. Yeah. What did they learn to you, your mother and your grandmother? I mean, 
my grandma, she created something amazing. She created a family, a big one, no? And I admired that a lot. I almost feel like a family, creating a family and putting love into that. That's almost like a life project. And I admire that a lot. And then my mom is a woman, a very strong woman. She always said to me, like, it's very important to be independent, not depend on the... O sea, poder ser independiente. Entonces, um, those are things that I always, uh, I think I carry here. My grandma used to be very uh, caring. She used to uh, prepararnos colacao. She used to take uh, glasses of milk. She would put uh, uh, cacao in it. She would, uh, ¿cómo se dice esto? Melange. Melange, 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 Like this, vous, vous, vous. Uh, till it was so perfect. And she would share it to me and, and my melange, cousins. Melange, 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 melange. Melange, 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 right? And she would uh, give it to us, and we wouldn't leave not even one uh, tear, because that's how good it was. So I would be with my cousins, and I remember dancing with them, singing with them, just having fun, you know? And... Uh, it would be in the, in the summer, and my grandma would find a way that we were to, all together, and that's really beautiful, and I, I love those, those memories. You say this word, strong woman. Yeah. What is it, a strong woman? A strong woman. Yeah. A strong woman. Yeah, it's the same as asking, what is it, what is it to be, I don't know, what is it, water, water is water. Yeah. I feel like that's something that is an inspiration for me, because the women I've been surrounded by, they are strong women. And it, that, that's just who they are. Mm. That's, that's who we are. Yeah. Do you explain that this is, to me, uh, a part of your success? Because in, in Motomami, you talk about self-esteem. Mm -hmm. How is it to keep up and keep your head up, like we'll say Tupac, <laughs> yeah. and to have yeah. self-esteem, even if it's hard because we're in a world where girls, even guys, are always challenged about the image that they give on the social media and blah, blah, blah. And how do you uh, decide to write about self-esteem? Because I listened to the track and I couldn't realize that when I see you doing videos, dancing, badass, that even you, you can have issues about self-esteem. I'm a human. Every human deals with that, no? But at the end of the day, for me, there's something very li liberating in uh, understanding how powerful energy is. I think that a lot of times it's, it's about your energy. If you use your energy in the right way, if you place your energy in the right place, it's, it's about that more than anything else. So I, I try to just stay connected to who I am, the reason why I think that I'm here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then the rest happens. The rest, yeah, todo se pone en su lugar. Las piezas se ponen en su lugar. When I'm in the studio and I'm preparing a project, I know I am where I'm supposed to be. So when I feel like that, that's the best feeling. I don't care about the result after. I don't care about what other people can, la crítica o no crítica, la presión, na, na, na. All of that is, is like, that's not why I do this. I do this because it comes from the urge, it comes from the need to make music. And then, as long as I'm, I'm true to that, and I stay in that place, then for me, th that's it. All the rest happens uh, naturally. I see it almost like this is my job as it could be any other. I'm a musician. Mm. I happen to be a musician. And then I feel grateful. Um, I think gratefulness anchors me, so I stay grateful and I keep going. And I push myself, definitely, and I work hard. Anything that I have, definitely, there, mm, Dios. Sabes, definitivamente, gracias a Dios, pero también these 15, 16 hours a day in the studio for months, it's like, there was times that I wanted to be like, man, I just want to go home. And I just want to be at, at home with my family and with my people, but then I'm happy I didn't quit. And, and at the end of the day, my manager was saying, 
the album Motomami is uh, number one worldwide in Spotify. And I was like, that's crazy. To me, that's crazy. And I feel like almost, okay, this type of blessing can happen just if I really worked on it and if I really put my blood, sweat, tears. And if I really wanted it, it wouldn't happen if I didn't commit, like I committed to it. So all of that makes me feel uh, muy llena, and it makes me feel, see, that self-esteem that you're talking about, sometimes it's about, that, for me, a lot, about being where I'm supposed to be and honor that place and that, that situation, and honor the people that I have around and be grateful all the time, stay there in, the, in, the, in that gratefulness. You have a power because you have a big audience, and when you, you pay um, homage to queer people, mm -hmm. to transsexual, to people who want to change its identity, you're taking a risk because your music is listened in countries where it's not really allowed. So um, this is a point uh, that you have in common with Pablo Almodova mm -hmm. and you work with him. Mm -hmm. And do you think that to put this in, in your art can change the mentalities about this subject? I think if that happens and there's more awareness and, and uh, that uh, there's more mind open about different individualidades, I think that's very positive. And I always want that as an artist, I throw ideas, I throw feelings, I throw reflections. I don't expect that the, the people who receive it think the same way, but I throw it with all my love. and. I, I happen to be very open-minded in here and in here. And yeah, I, I feel very connected to Pedro Almodovar's work, because I think that he always had a very special point of view about femininity, beyond physical. Mm. It's beyond, it's like it's an energy. Again, something that for me, Motomami, that word represents an energy, a feminine, strong energy. And I, I always loved his movies, and um, I have him present. I even put him on the credits of El Mal Quereras, uh, saying thank you to many artists that inspired me. I think it was Caetano, there was Kendrick, and there was Pedro. And I think that at the end of the day, yeah, people are gonna find what they need to find when they see those those things I've thrown there, I put on the table, they're gonna find what they need to find. Hopefully there's something about accepting a los demás, even the others are different. Definitely, diferentes a ellos, ¿me entiendes? Y at the end of the day, I'm changing every day. I love uh, uh, people who's connected with them transforming and them changing and they are comfortable transforming and changing. And I, I kind of uh, feel like I'm, I'm not the same from yesterday and I'm not gonna be the same tomorrow. And I celebrate that. And that's why there's so many uh, menciones uh, on that during the album. Um, can we talk about Frank Ocean? Okay. Because he's a game changer. Yeah, definitely. When he speaks, he changed the, 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 the world in his way because yeah. his voice uh, uh, has a lot of power and right. helped a lot of people in the world. Yeah. Um, how did you connect it and how did you work together? What, what are you talking about when you're working? Because I feel that the way you're working together is more about finding a sense and, okay, let's talk about what we are going to do, what's, what's the meaning of what we are going to do. We are friends and it happens to be that we are both musicians. And yeah, there's conversations about uh, music and uh, we, he works in a studio where I, I've worked in that studio too and we hang and yeah, it's just somebody that has a, a very beautiful free spirit and mind, yeah. She's working at the pyramid tonight. Working at the pyramid, yeah, yeah. Working at the pyramid tonight, yeah. 
Working at the pyramid. Oh, I working at the pyramid tonight. Yeah, working at the pyramid. Ooh, ooh. Working at the pyramid tonight. Working at the pyramid. And as a musician, mm -hmm. can you explain me his voice? I would love to hear a musician talking... You're talking about his, literally his voice? Yeah, his voice. I think he's very, his voice is very open. I think that when I hear him, if we're talking about when I hear his albums or when I hear him singing in person, I almost feel like, you know, you can hear a voice and you can hear how open that body is or how... how La resonancia, you know what I mean? And I always feel like his voice is muy abierta and very powerful and very honest. I feel like he's my favorite musician because of that honesty. I, I, can, I can feel that honesty in his songs and the way he uses his voice. I love the decisions he makes uh, when he does his songs. Even hentai, there's something about the decision I made of Okay, this music, como de alguna manera mm, contraponer esta esta música to these lyrics, there's inspiration in how much, how many times he does that in his music, and, and yeah, he's great. Te quiero ride como mi bike, hazme un tape, modo spike. Yo la batí hasta que se montó Segundo chingarte, lo primero Dios So, 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 so Can we talk about the anti culture? Yeah. It's in, it's in this album. Mm -hmm. Can you explain us? Um, I thought that uh, it's uh, much more interesting, something that is suggestive than explicit, and I felt like the fact that it's draw, uh, it already um, proposes propose yeah. uh, a fantasy. And I think that that's very interesting and very beautiful. And yeah, there's... Uh, sexual, kind of like a crudo uh, content in the lyrics. But also, I feel like in the song, again, contrast, I think there's the, the tenderness and the obscene put together, so both feel strong the same way. Mm. There's fra fragilidad in, in the way the chords are chosen, played, etc. But at the same time, there's something very powerful in those lyrics that could think, again, you could think about Lil Kim's lyrics, which I'm not, uh, no, a mí no me parece, oh, such a uh, crazy lyrics. I think it's more like just, just, just lyrics. Uh, but I realized that it's still, um, the fact that people would be like, oh, oh, oh with just these 15 seconds, they hurt, 15. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> of hentai, this makes it obvious to me that still people feel uncomfortable with a woman that express openly about her sexuality. And that doesn't make any sense to me. Mm. Bjork did it before, Madonna did it before, and yeah, they had to go through mm. this. How is it possible that we still, like, yeah. this is still something that people have to be, feel uncomfortable about? How do you explain that? Because when you say... Uh, exactly. To, How do you explain to, that? To, to male artists, they're saying a lot of... All male artists, say they say so much shit. <laughs> yeah, they say so much. Like, and nobody, nobody does like this. Nobody, yeah. nadie se pone lo, la, las manos en la cabeza. No, nobody thinks that that's um, strange. Nobody questions yeah. that because either. When a guy say, I fuck uh, 10 bitch, uh, I killed uh, 10 guys, there's no problem. Yeah, I think that there's, uh, actually when you say that, it makes me think that there's um, so much normalized violence towards women. While women, we have to always um, push so much in order for us to just express 
with all the layers that as women we can have because you know like Bjork said it really good and I don't think I ever heard nobody said it better. She said like, um, I don't know exactly the words, I don't remember right now, but she said something like, oh, men, society accepts you know, that men can be funny, they can be silly, they can be so many things, blah, blah, blah. And women, they just expect us, expect to be just feminine when that doesn't make any fucking sense. Mm. Literally, it's just, that's, una puta locura. That doesn't make any sense. We are so many things. Plus, maybe feminine and period. Maybe feminine. You know what I mean? Mm. So this is still mind blowing to me. It's the same in a life. Uh, if a guy has a, a, a lot of girls, he's a Don Juan. And if a girl uh, have a lot of men, she's a bitch. Right, not anymore. Yeah, not anymore. How can you change that? I think it's already happening. Yeah. Yeah. How do you put this in the brain of your audience? How do you put that in the brain of the audience, Because you're asking? we're trying to talk about this. Uh -huh. And when I'm asking um, this question in a provocative way, it's to, to shock the people who think like this, you know? And I think that it's changing, but it's still, it's mm. still here because mm. uh, it depends of where are you talking, you know? And I feel that for a lot of girls, this, this struggle is still here. Yeah. You know, uh, I think that women, we are the biggest creative force in nature. And that's something that is hard to deal with for some people, apparently. And um, I just think that, uh, they're gonna have to figure out a way to deal with it. That's just how it is. <laughs> yeah. Period. Lo que pasó me ha dejado en vela Ya no puedo ni pensar La sangre le hierve Siempre quiere más Puñaladita Está su ambición en el pecho afilada es lo peor Es mal amante la fama Y no va a quererme de verdad Es demasiado traicionera Y como ella viene se me va Yo sé que será celosa Yo nunca le confiaré Si quiero duermo con ella Pero nunca me la voy a casar But I don't understand how people can be shocked about when you talk about sexuality. Yeah, I think that still people have to... Uh, apparently, they still have to get used to women yeah. expressing in a way that is not... how it maybe is expected, yeah. I guess, which it doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, I don't see there's one proper way, but... Uh, It's clear that still uh, society has uh, their own uh, <laughs> what's proper, what's not, ta ta ta. <laughs> And we go back to the helmet. Mm -hmm. I feel it's a, a way to break. You know, when the helmet is going to the wall, <laughs> mm -hmm. you can break the wall. Right. Hell yeah. I like that you say that. And I feel like also the helmet is almost what you put on. Uh, that gives you the confidence, no? When sometimes at the same time, when you are just connected with your nature and your center, you can get that confidence too. But, uh, yeah, when you were talking about the self-confidence, I feel like there's some motto in that too, you know? And, see. I know that you're a geek. You love mangas, you love anime. Mm. Uh, you, t you talk about Akira. Yeah. Who, and I remember the motto scene of yeah. Canada. So iconic, yes. Yeah. Yes. And I'd like to talk about Akira because this is one of my favorite movies ever. Yeah. When we created Click, it was the first movie that we yeah. put on the channel. Right. Why Akira is still modern? Why Akira is still, is still the future? That's such a great question. That's when a classic is done, no? When it feels atemporal, beyond time, no? Um, 
I think there's an urge in the images. There's an urge in the way it's created. And I feel kind of the same way with Evangelion. It proposes like a, a es un micro universo. And, and that's really powerful, yeah. And when I'm watching Acura, it's the same with a great album. Uh, mm. When I'm listening to a great album, a great movie, mm. uh, I'm, I know that I won't understand everything, <laughs> you know? <laughs> that you want the details. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I feel you, I feel you. Is it, is it how you, when I listen to a song like Chicken Teriyaki, <laughs> who, who is a kind of drop of everything <laughs> yeah. who goes to your hand, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, a, you know Kadavrexki? You know what it is? A ver? A Kadavrexki is a way to, 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 to write. Yeah. And every sentence must go after the, 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 the previous sentence. Okay. Without to be connected. So yes. at the time, at the end, yeah. you have a piece. Of yeah. art, you know. <laughs> Where did this technique come from? Cadavre exquis. Yeah. It's from the artistic movement called yeah. the, the surrealist. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. I love that you say that. I feel like in this project, I worked on thinking ways to write different. I love haikus. I love uh, escritura automática. Mm. Uh, I love Ocean Wong. He's one of my references. And also watching Eon Flux, watching Evangelion, watching all of that, it really inspired me. The, the character you see in Eon Flux, there's something really powerful to me of that, uh, that uh, character. And I, I don't know, I think that almost anything can be an excuse to start a song. And watching all, all of that, reading, Trying to understand detail again. What you say when you say the details, I agree with you. Trying to understand every detail in a Patti Smith lyrics, like all of that, really inspires me to keep going. You work with uh, Pharrell, yeah. who's all about the details. Definitely, definitely. The way he writes too, it's crazy to see him like in, in front of the the mic. How he improvises. We talked about improvisation before. He is a master in that. He is great, the way he improvises too, in the keyboard, chat too, amazing. And I feel really honored that with all these people I could work, I could curate this project. Um, yeah, I could, I could feel almost like, as a musician, it made me grow, the fact that I could share time. A month and something with Pharrell, a couple of weeks with uh, this other musician, Caroline Shaw, that is, she's amazing, she's a great musician. And then here and there, like working in different places, being in Puerto Rico, Barcelona, Nueva York, Republic Dominicana, Miami, LA, all of that really conditionó the way this album sounds, the way I wrote. It really affects my pen, and I'm happy that it's like that. I like that it's like that because. If one day that doesn't happen, I'm going to be worried. Because I love that my music, the decisions I make as a producer, and the, the way, the words that I use. If I'm more in the US, because I was far from home. Mm. For almost two years, I was far from my town and my family. And that was a sacrifice I did. I decided to do it because of this project. And I couldn't go back. Because if I came back, I didn't know if I could continue the project in the US. So I stayed, I stayed, I stayed. And then I feel like all of this really made me grow. I was talking more English than anything else. So I was learning that language. And then that would affect how I would approach the lyrics. And then there's some Spanglish. It happens to be like that. Or there's like this inspiration to all these styles. Because I was meeting new people and I was uh, learning new music and new stuff. And I, I really celebrate that. I really feel happy about it. The, the, the fact that being in new places 
makes me be a different mm. musician. But I think that now you became more da than an adult, you became a boss. <laughs> I think I've always been a boss. <laughs> I think I grew up and I realized that uh, that's my personality. That's who I am. Vestida con F de Fendi, bailando plan vela de candy. Así tú te prendaste de mí, el día en que yo te conocí. Sé que tú no me has olvidado, no me has olvidado, no me has olvidado. Solo tú no me has olvidado, no me has olvidado, no me has olvidado. Ya no te quiero como antes, me rompiste pero solo en parte. Llevaba tus clavos para pensarte. is your boss routine? <laughs> What's your, your boss decision, your boss organization? Well, uh, first of all, I always do what I want. No, 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 okay. <laughs> first of all, <laughs> you asking me for a, a day, my normal day? No, not normal day. <laughs> like, how do you, uh, um, do you believe in, in the power of visualization? Yes. You believe in that? Yeah, 100%. I would do that when I was a kid and I didn't know. So how yes. do you visualize your, your boss job, your boss role? <laughs> I just think about it more like what's next, what I still haven't learned, what I, ha I still haven't experienced as a musician, what it's uncomfortable still, what can I do better? I always think like this. You give a key is to, to be a boss and still learning. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Like, I think there's a responsibility when, when your um, project gets bigger, your team gets bigger with it, and then my responsibility gets bigger with it. Um, and then I feel like in order to progress, keep going, I always have to stay as a student and I always have to know what I haven't learned yet. What's my lesson? What's my lesson? I repeat that to myself a lot of times because I think that there's always masters around. It's just that you have to be aware of it. I had more obvious ones. My master, Flamenco, for 10 years, Chiqui de la Línea. Uh, Charm Ladonna, when she was teaching me how to uh, stand in the stage and not just be singing, sitting. Instead, how to move, how to... Uh, reconnect with the fluidity in movement. That was another master to me. And constantly there's masters in our life. Uh, and if you are aware of it, you always stay as a student. And you can learn from people of every kind of social class, every kind of country. In it's, life. It's not about success. It's not about anything but people. Like as humans, we learn with other humans, uh, we, we are through the human experience, no? And then we learn with, with the others. And a lot of people say that, no? That you cannot see yourself, but through the others, no? And I think that makes kind of sense. And now that you're a boss, you have something interesting is that you're working with your family. Mm -hmm. Your sister is working with you. Yeah. And is it something that can help you to, to say something in a creative way that you couldn't say to somebody else? Because right. I know that she, she's, she's stylist. She's like a visual artist. Yeah. She works in all my visuals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's a visual artist, but she knows, she knows you since always. Yeah. So <laughs> you have no taboo when you want to express an idea. No, no, no. And I'm very lucky I can work with my sister, that I can work with my mom too. Um, my sister is a visual artist, as I was saying, and she's kind of my muse a lot of times. Like, she inspires me. And she can create very free. She's a very free person. She can create visually. He can imagine, she can visualize a lot. And I, I really admire that from her. I learned a lot about, uh, about that with her. I think that we always played when we were kids to dress each other 
to uh, cut fabric and, you know, that's why I say in Saoko, coge la cortala. Like, just, just do that. If you're envisioning something, if you're envisioning to do a dress, then just do it. If you don't find the dress that you want, then create it. With my sister, we're still playing. We're still having fun. We, are, we always sit and have conversations and we have fun and we talk about, uh, oh, we could do this, we could do that. And we create mood boards, we create treatments. We are always like in converse, conversating constantly. So we do the creative direction of uh, this project together. Right with my, my, my best friend, Ferran, too, in yeah. this project, but um, we've been doing this all our lives. So when you're thinking at the time when you were kids and playing, yeah. dressing yourself and yeah. I'm going to be the musician, um, <laughs> what is the first memory that you have? Well, I remember with my sister playing as we were friends, like practicing how to be friends. <laughs> and uh, we spent so much time uh, doing that when we were kids just acting like we were grown up and we were just friends. And we would act like this. And we practice so much that now we do it amazing. We are best friends. She's my best friend. I spend so much time with her and I'm never tired of spending time with her. And she knows perfectly how to make me laugh. I know perfectly how to make her laugh. Uh, we always go and uh, try uh, clothes and she's always honest to me. She's pretty brutal. Um, very honest to her too, and I always tell her what I think about anything that she asks me. And uh, yeah, we're lucky we have this friendship. What is the thing that makes you the more love, laugh in the life? Um, life, no, in general. Like, there's so many situations that is like, lol. Like, <laughs> there's so many situations that you're like, really, this just happened? Like, in my day to day, I found that constantly. Yeah. Can you show me something? Um, I, 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 saw, I saw you on stage like four years ago. Okay. And you were sit <laughs> yeah. a lot of time. Right. And doing... In Los Angeles, that yeah. tour? In Paris. So you came to see the, the Los Angeles show? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you, you were doing... Oh, that's crazy. Hmm. You were always working with your hands. Yeah. But it was crazy because what you were doing with your hands, we felt like it was all your bodies working. Mm. Can you explain to me what, what is that art? I honestly have no idea what I did. <laughs> I really have no idea, to be honest. You were like... I have no idea. I was like, she's possessed. There is somebody, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I really don't know at all what the fuck you're talking about, what I, what I did. But I think, if it was with Los Angeles, I remember for that project, I felt comfortable because I was singing about death in mm. all the songs. So I felt comfortable, dressed, uh, from toes to, to neck, and I would just show my, my face and my hands. And I felt there was something really powerful in that, and that could really, I, where I could really channel that type of energy dressed like that. And I remember I, those songs were technically super difficult to, to execute. So I, it was helpful for me to just be sitting and just focusing on open my body, open it from here to here. And I remember that the hands were the easiest part of my body to move <laughs> while I was singing <laughs> because of the technical difficulty. So uh, probably every, all the energy went here and uh, here. You know, because on, on, <laughs> on, the, on the audience, yeah. the, the, the public was like, it's a new heart. <laughs> She's doing crazy stuff with the hands. <laughs> I was like, okay. okay, what is that art? Great, great. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Sometimes, yeah, that's what I'm saying to you. Like, people find what they need to find. You just throw ideas and people find what they need to find. They see what they need to see. And before to leave you, what can I wish for you? <laughs> I'd rather ask you what can I wish for you all. <laughs> to, to be still us. See, blessings, blessings, no? Although, I don't know. I'm changing all the time. I, I guess you're changing all the time too. Yeah. Uh, so because of be the food. Us, I don't know what that is. Yeah. Uh, I think I'd rather think about blessings, 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 blessings. And whatever you all need, you, you, I hope you get it. Thank God. Yeah. Dieu merci. 
Merci. Merci Muchas beaucoup. gracias, merci. Merci beaucoup. Un gusto. Merci. <rire>